Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to another video. I hope you guys are doing well today. So, in this video, I want to talk about five changes I would make to Diablo 4 before Season 1. I'm going to jump straight into it. So, the first change is a gem and a sigil bag. These should be two separate new additions, but I think it could be one of the biggest quality of life changes we see in the game just generally right now. Freeze our inventory, which has such a small amount of space. It frees our stash, which again, small amount of space. And allows us such a great amount of organization. The second option is, or the second change I would make, is an enchant item stat options window. Now, I don't know if I've described that very well. What I mean is, in Diablo 3, you could go to the enchanter, you could put an item in, and you could see all of the different options that you could roll on that item. Now you could see the range, what they could roll, um, and it was great. I mean, I could look at an item and go, okay, yeah, I know I can roll vulnerability on this weapon, or I can roll critical hit chance on this gloves, or, or whatever. And this is great, and for some reason we don't have that in Diablo 4, and I think it's something that is a really minor change, but actually could make a really big difference for people who don't know what they can and can't roll on items. Uh, third is a slight Paragon rework. Now, I actually enjoy Paragon. I think it's a really interesting source of power compared to what we had in Diablo 3, which was basically just every time you gain a level, you gain five main stat. Um, the customization and the experimentation of kind of the Paragon board as a whole is brilliant. However, you, we should have a complete board reset. I understand it's going to be expensive, but I did a full respec, and that was skills and Paragon tree for around 3 million gold. That's not that bad, especially towards the end game. So give us that option, please. Um, and a singular board reset. I should be able to just pick a board and go, I want to reset that board. Now, we should only be able to work if it doesn't break roots to other boards and other pieces. I understand that, but just some quality of life here would be brilliant. Now, we're getting to the fourth and fifth. These are the wholly unrealistic but best case scenario updates. So, the fourth is reworking the resistance system. Currently, resistances on items are seen as completely wasted defensively. And it has a major impact on the gearing system, actually, because armor and damage reduction being king means you're looking for less slots on an item, right? Um, I'm not looking for that triple resistance main stat helmet. I'm looking for an armor helmet or a cooldown reduction helmet because I don't need to pick up these resistances. I can get rid of those. I can go for something more utility or offensive base. Resists allow you to target your defense by saying, I want to be capped on frost and fire damage, and I can go and target those defenses, and I should be very, very tanky against those. Um, this would remove some of the offensive slots because you'd pick up the resists. However, I really like the idea that not being able to reach the maximum resist of all resists is good. Um, I don't want to have just infinite tankiness. Um, I like the idea of being able to kind of have be a jack of all trades, have maybe 30, 40% resistance to, to every resistance, uh, or target them and go, oh, I want 100% resistance, 80% resistance, whatever it is, whatever that arbitrary number is, against certain resistances. So as an example, let me take poison damage. Poison damage is one of the most frustrating damage sources in the game because you can just see it hitting you and there's very little you can do about it at least with frost or fire or lightning it's going to hit you and you know it's going to hit you and it's going to hurt but you can avoid it or you can pop a defensive beforehand pop a defensive afterwards pop a heal then you're going to be okay but poison you can pop a potion and it might still take up the rest of your health bar um so that's my thoughts on that and the fifth one is fix the xp with the nerf to XP dungeons, we haven't really got a contender for best XP per hour yet, which I think is a good thing. I don't think it should be a natural, this is just the best, don't do anything else but this. But all of the XP per hour options suck right now. I am 98 in a bit, and my levels are taking a long time, and that's partly my fault, but losing access to some of these higher XP per hour options has really impacted that. Nightmare Dungeons should realistically feel the most rewarding. It's the hardest difficulty and the most investment. Helltide should be short bursts of high-risk intensity in order to not risk dying to lose your soul cinders. 
um, and could be a decent XP source. Legion events could be turned into this regular event that uh, instead of just doing the kill mobs, kill boss, repeat three times, and then kill a bigger boss, if you succeed through that and you do that as a mastery, allow us to scale that to a map-wide event, right? So everyone in that zone gets the campfire buff or gets the legion buff, which turns into, I don't know, three portal spawn and you have to go and kill all three mobs. You can't do it solo. It requires a group. It requires group gameplay. That's awesome. That would feel great. And if you do it as a map-wide event, maybe turn it into like an entire zone event. So instead of being one area of dry steps, you would turn it into all of dry steps. That would be awesome. And you would have groups going off and splitting up to different portals and coming back and maybe killing some world boss style thing. Like that in itself, you could give so much XP for that. It could be quite a common event, but you would need good gameplay to get through it. And it would make the world feel alive. Um, all of these are just random ideas but generally the xp itself is the important part there has to be a form of progression in this game and xp is the way it works and i don't like the fact that people are succumbing to the grind so early around 90 is when i feel like the grind should become a grind everything before that should just be natural progression um, and I say 90 similarly to how I look at Path of Exile. Path of Exile is actually quite rare. That, well, not rare, but it's not necessary to hit 100. If I look at my power spike between 90 and 100, actually, it's not been massive. I could easily be doing what I'm doing now at 90. And I think it's one of those things that, like, that last 10 level should feel prestigious. And it should feel long. And it should feel rewarding and tough and grindy. But everything up to that should just feel like natural progression. I shouldn't have to grind for 40 levels before that just to feel that natural progression at the end. So I'm going to leave it here. I'd love to know what you guys think in the comments below. And uh, yeah, just, just let's start a dialogue. Thanks for watching, guys, and catch you later. Goodbye.